Hey KCG kids, so excited that you joined us for another week of KCG. Before we get started, I've got a few friends that would like to say something. Hey third graders, it's Miss Katie. Hey guys, I miss you so much. Hey everybody, this is Stephanie Lanici, or as most of you know me, Ben's mom. Hey girls, I hope you're enjoying your extended break. I miss y'all so much, like you don't even know. Hey KCG, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the best second graders in the world. Hey, good morning guys. Uh, this is Mr. John. I just want to call and say that I miss seeing you guys on Wednesday night and uh, been praying for you. I miss you guys on Wednesday night. I sure look forward to seeing you soon. I hope you all have a great week. Sure do miss you all. Wish you were all hoping and praying that you're all doing. Hi, Miss Alethea here. Just wanted to tell you I was thinking about you today and give you a shout out, let you know I'm praying for you and just remind you that you're in the palm of God's hands and so are your families. I hope y'all are having a wonderful time being at home right now. I hope you're spending good quality time with your families and I hope you're staying in God's word. I am praying for each of you and I cannot wait to see you again. I am praying for you and if you guys need anything, I hope that you will let us know. Have an awesome time and, and really take advantage of this time at home with, with each other. We love you. We're praying for you. Um, I pray that y'all are staying healthy and you're having a great time and you're doing everything that your parents tell you to do. What's up third grade boys? I hope y'all are staying safe and well. I miss seeing you every week. Hopefully we'll get to see you soon. Get out, do some exercise, mow the lawn, push through your chores. But most of all, just look forward to seeing you soon. Y'all take care, God bless. I sure do miss seeing all of your smiling faces. I know that this is a tough time for everybody. Hope everybody's doing well and just want to say look forward to seeing you all again as soon as we can. God bless everybody. I can't wait to see all your faces again soon and I hope that you have the best week. Just know that I'm still here for you if you need anything. We will see you soon. Um, I hope y'all have a great week. I love you and miss you. Bye. So I hope you know how much your connect group leaders have missed you guys while you've been away. We are so looking forward to being back with you soon. But before we jump into our lesson tonight, we want to go ahead and celebrate our birthdays. So if you've had a birthday from March 28th through April 4th, go ahead and stand up. We're going to do the drill. So yell it out so I can hear you all the way through your phone or your computer or your tablet or whatever you're watching me on. So what's your name? And how old are you? What do you want to be when you grow up? Awesome! We're going to go ahead and sing Happy Birthday. You ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. We hope you have a happy birthday and we hope you eat some cake and ice cream and maybe even a donut. We hope you have a great birthday from all your KCG friends. Before we get started on our lesson, we are going to play a game. Who likes games? I do. So we're going to play a game. What I want you to do is when I hold up a sign, I want you to yell it out real loud what you think that sign represents. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. This is the first symbol. Tell me what it means. What did you say? Did you say McDonald's? That's it. McDonald's. That's right. When we see these signs riding down the road, we know it's time for a Happy Meal. All right, McDonald's. Next one. Let's see what our next one is. Ready? <gasps> okay, what's that? Did you say Disney World? That's it. That's one of my favorite places. Disney World. When we see the ears, we know Mickey's around. Okay, you ready? All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, what's that? What is that? <gasps> it's an apple. That's right. But what does that mean? It means that's the kind of phones that a lot of our parents use, or maybe are the computer. Apple products. That's it. It's, it's a type of computer or phone. Got two more. <gasps> what's that? Swoosh. Nike. That's right. 
And last but not least, ready? Here it is. <gasps> Chick-fil-A, you're right. Awesome, y'all did so good. I'm so proud of y'all. Each of these symbols, we recognize just by the symbol itself, what it means. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about, is about symbols. So, are you ready for our Bible verse? Are you ready for our Bible verse? All right, it comes from Romans 6, 4. Can you say it with me? For we died and were buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Romans 6, 4. Very good. Let's say it one more time. Romans 6, 4. For we died and were buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Romans 6, 4. Great job. So, based on that Bible verse, what do you think we might be talking about tonight? Jesus. That's right. We're going to talk about Jesus. But what else might we be going to talk about? Let's see. In the verse, we talked about someone dying and being buried with Christ in baptism. And then we talked about Christ being raised from the dead and the power that we have to live new lives. So, I'll tell you what, this word here, uh, this word right here, baptism. <gasps> That's what we're going to talk about tonight. You got it. So, baptism. I know many of my friends at KCG, you've already been baptized. That's great. We celebrate when you've already been baptized. And there's some of you that may not have taken the step for baptism yet, and that's okay too. We just want to learn more about what does being baptized mean or what does baptism mean and how does it apply to each and every one of us. And so tonight, um, we're going to be talking about what does it mean to be baptized. But before we jump into talking what it means to be baptized, I'd like to show you a little video clip of my friend Caleb. Okay, I'm Celia Thorrington, and I'm the Director of Children's Ministry, and April Rogers, my assistant. Uh, Caleb came to our ministry about a year ago, and um, he just brings joy to our day every day. But uh, about a month or two ago, he started coming to us and saying, I, I want to be baptized. And so his mother, April, came to us and said, I'm not sure, you know, what do we need to do? And so uh, Caleb came to my office, and we sat and had a conversation, and I have never witnessed such a transformation in a child. Uh, it is very obvious that Caleb loves Jesus and that Caleb told me himself that he wanted Jesus to come and live inside of him. And so we are just overjoyed at the transformation that has happened in this young man's life because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Caleb, I need to ask you a question here. You ready? Yes? You ready? No? Yes? yes. Okay. All right. Why do you want to be baptized today? So the Holy Spirit can live inside of me. Amen. Amen. All right. Helping with the baptism today is Billy and April, his uh, parents. So we're going to baptize Caleb at this time. So we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear with Christ in baptism and rise to walk in newness of life. Fabulous. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did of that big day that we celebrated Caleb's baptism. You know, Caleb was baptized in the very same way that many of you have been baptized. And did you know that many of you have been baptized in the very same way that Jesus was baptized? In the book of Matthew, we read about how Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. Jesus would have been about 30 years old at this time, and it was time for him to start his ministry here on earth. And so he went down to the Jordan River where his cousin John the Baptist, oh, by the way, John the Baptist is called John the Baptist because he baptizes people. Anyway, John the Baptist was his cousin. And so Jesus said, John, baptize me. And John was like, whoa, hold up. You, you want me to baptize you? You ought to be baptizing me. And Jesus said, no, baptize me. So 
Jesus went down into the water where his cousin was, and his cousin John held him back and then pulled him up. And at the very moment Jesus came up out of the water, a light from heaven shone down and a dove descended down onto the earth. And then a voice from heaven called out, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. That was the voice of God. God was calling out and God was saying, this is Jesus. He's my son and he's doing exactly what I called him to do. How cool is that? So you see, baptism is a call that all Christians who accept Christ are called to make that public statement to others that shows we are followers of Christ. You remember that game we played earlier when I held up the symbols of different things and asked you to tell me what you thought they meant? So like the swish meant Nike or the apple meant Apple computers or Apple iPhones. Well, baptism is kind of like that. You see, how many of you have ever accepted Christ? You've accepted Jesus as your personal savior. Okay, at the moment that you accept Christ, when you pray that prayer and ask Jesus to come and live inside of you, that is the moment that you become the follower of Christ. That is the moment that you have been saved. But what happens is you may not be baptized at that moment. It may be a week, maybe a month. It may even be a year after you actually pray that prayer and give your life over to Jesus that you get baptized. So let's say you don't get baptized for a year after you accept Christ. Does that mean that you weren't really saved? No, that's not what it means. It just means on this day, this is a symbol of what has already happened. I accepted Christ last week, but I didn't actually get baptized and share it with other people for a year later. So it's like a symbol. When we see people being baptized, we automatically know oh, that means that they are a follower of Christ, that they have accepted Christ as their savior. But what does that mean to accept Christ as your savior? Does it just mean, okay, yeah, Jesus, he's a cool guy. I like him. I accept him. No, that's not what it means. When we accept Jesus as our savior, it means we are giving our lives over to him, to be a follower of him, to live our lives for him, to let him be the power inside of us to do all things. Remember our Bible verse? And we're buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also have new lives. When my friend Caleb decided to become a Christian and to follow Christ, he said, I wanna let my old life be behind me. I wanna to die to that old life and I wanna live my life with the power of Jesus so that I may live a new life. And if you have been baptized, if you have accepted Christ, you too are letting go of your old life and you are living your life for Christ so that the power that he puts inside of you is what controls you. If you haven't made that decision yet, um, I ask you to either talk to your parents talk to a small group leader, or you can even contact me at the church office. My email is Celia at centeringlives.com. Parents, we are so thankful that you have joined us uh, tonight in our lesson on baptism. And we want to invite you to come back with us next Wednesday night. Next Wednesday night, we'll be talking about communion. Um, communion is one of the most important things as a Christian that we have the opportunity to take a part of is uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So uh, we invite you to come and watch the video next Wednesday night. It'll be completely interactive. We ask you to go ahead and pick up some grape juice and maybe some bread or some crackers because we will actually do communion together as a church body, albeit over the internet. Um, we'll also talk about why it's such a special meal and that it is a meal that is reserved for baptized Christians. So we hope you'll come back and join us next week for that. So we're gonna wrap up our time together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you so much 
just for uh, coming to this earth. We thank you for coming to this earth as a perfect example of love and forgiveness. We thank you that you were willing to die on the cross for us. Thank you for saving us from our sin and thank you for giving us new life. We thank you for what baptism represents. It represents a new life, it represents new hope, and it represents forgiveness. Thank you for giving us that. I thank you for the boys and girls and the leaders that we um, have the opportunity to meet with. And I thank you for the time that we have had here tonight. Pray that you will be with us this week. And um, we look forward to being together again next week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope you all had a great night. I always love being with you, and I can't wait to be with you again in person. Till next time, see ya!